welcome to Chandwell. My name's Michael and I'm building a city-based viaduct layout in Engage. All of the structures in Chandwell are scratch built from card and I often get asked about the materials and tools that I use. In this video I'll give a quick tour of my modelling setup and put links to everything in the description of the video. I really hope you find it useful. Please give it a thumbs up if you do. All of my scratch builds are designed in the free drawing software Inkscape. I make videos about Inkscape and it is super for creating quick mock-ups or complex models like my Royal Scott Hotel. I use textures from scalescenes.com. They have a great range and once you buy a sheet for £2.50 you can print it and use it as often as you like. Each sheet contains the texture itself and a range of matching arches, coping and lintels. I import them into Inkscape for finer control of how the textures are applied to my buildings. Another great source for textures is the website textures.com. You don't need a subscription as the lowest quality free downloads are of high enough resolution for model railways. Try to look out for the seamless ones if you've got larger areas to cover. Canon MG5753 inkjet printer. It has separate ink cartridges so that I only need to buy a colour when it runs out. I use genuine Canon ink which costs between £13 and £15 per cartridge. I do go through quite a lot of ink and maybe a printer with a subscription plan will be more cost effective. For simple paper mock-ups I use plain old basic copier paper. This 80 GSM ream was bought from Tesco for £3.50 for 500 sheets. For quickly making base layers or mock-ups from card, I print line drawings onto A4 sized sticky labels. These are cheap and really easy to use. I buy them from eBay in boxes of 200 for £16. I don't use them for the printed finish on buildings as the resulting print is not very crisp. They are hard to accurately use in small sizes and they crinkle and cause the ink to smudge when you add varnish to them. I use this ProJet 110 GSM matte photo paper for all of my visible elements. It has a lovely smooth print surface which gives perfectly crisp prints. It's relatively thin at only 110 GSM and I find that this is perfect for folding crisp lines around corners. When used with my Canon inks the result is waterproof enough to take brushed on varnish without smudging the ink or crinkling the paper. I buy it from eBay for £8.47 per 100 A4 sheets. For my mock-ups and tiny building detail I use simple cereal packet which I collect from my family at no cost. I've said before that Weetabix is the king of the cereal packets as it's thin and very very sturdy. I use grey board for my main buildings. Grey board is superb to work with it is stiff and sturdy and it is a uniform thickness. Over time you get used to this uniformity and can design building components to the exact size to wrap around layers or joins of this card. I use half millimetre, one millimetre and sometimes two millimetre thicknesses. I bought my latest batch from eBay in bulk. I'm working my way through 500 sheets of half millimetre and 200 sheets of one millimetre card and I expect this to last at least 10 years. It costs just over £50 but the per sheet cost of doing it like this is very low. 95% of my work is held together with humble PVA. I use two types. This just stationary multi-purpose PVA glue is quite thin. It's great for gluing large pieces together in layers. It flows really quickly and is very easy to use. It's 4 95 on eBay. It's too wet for gluing the main texture printed pieces together and it causes the magenta ink to bleed slightly. So I use this thicker Noble Craft professional craft glue for my detail work and for fixing printed textures to my smaller base layers. Again from eBay, this costs $7.69. For fixing texture to large uncut surfaces, I use glue sticks. I use these Q Connect sticks, which are as good as any. I've used ones from Pound Shops, which work just as well. I last bought 10 of these from eBay for $6.99. They will last me a long time as I don't use them very much. Finally, I very occasionally use Uhu. This is super for creating a quick and solid bond, but it's a nightmare to use. It's extremely stringy and I find this very frustrating, but it does have its uses. Buy mine 
from eBay. I varnish all of my models once they are finished. I hate aerosols and I avoid using them as much as possible. So I apply varnish with a paintbrush. I've tried many, many varnishes over the years and I've finally settled on AK Interactive Acrylic Varnish because it's a varnish which does not stay on the printed surface and which is absolutely 100% dead, dead flat matte. I apply two coats of matte varnish and then two further coats of ultra matte varnish. This is again from eBay and costs around eight pounds a bottle. Always be careful and test your varnish first. I've seen pictures of this varnish smudging some people's builds. I don't know if it's down to the brand of painter ink or the brand of paper, or maybe I'm just lucky. So always test first. I like to keep things simple and I don't have a huge number of tools that I use. I have an A2 sized cutting mat and an older A3 one which I use when gluing. Above this, I have a couple of organizer trays which I bought from Scale Model Scenery. One holds offcuts of card and the other holds my everyday tools. These fine tip glue applicators are my most treasured tool. They're about 10 years old. I bought them from Anne Peaks finetip.co.uk website. The pins don't rust like the Metcalf equivalent ones did and they are perfect for adding fine beads of PVA to models. Sadly, it looks like Anne has gone out of business and I don't know where I would buy anything as good as these. For cutting large components and base layers, I use a snap-off knife. I bought this Irwin one from my local hardware shop years ago and it's caused me no trouble. I buy cheap, unbranded snap-off blades from eBay. These ones cost me $3.99 for 10 and are lasting really well. I use a Swan Morton scalpel handle with Swan Morton 10A blades. I find these the perfect shape for all of the fine cutting I do. I last bought the blades as a pack of 100 for £13.97 on, you guessed it, eBay. Tweezers are essential. I bought these ones in Hobbycraft. I bought this tool in the wool section of Hobbycraft. I think it's a crochet hook. I use it all the time for helping get crisp folds when I wrap texture sheets around the card. It's also handy for removing glue that may have oozed out of a 90 degree corner joint. I use a basic steel rule for cutting. This one is about 20 years old. I should use a safety rule and that is next on my list. I have a box of little black and orange clamps that I bought on eBay years ago. I use these all the time to hold components together as the glue sets. There's a load of Lego in the box too. This is super for building right angle jigs to hold things together. I use these right angle jigs more often though. These are from Scale Model Scenery and cost £5.99 for the pair. You will have occasionally seen me use these magnetic corner clamps. These are from York Model Making. They're expensive at £57, but they are invaluable for the taller buildings when holding components together. I have various other tools and things neatly stored away for the rare times that I need them. I love to make things as cheaply as I can, and I found that simple card, PVA, a knife and a steel rule is all that you really need once you have your parts printed. I've put links to all of this in the description of this video, so have a look there if you need more detail. A quick hello and thank you to Eric Saint, who has joined my channel as a Chandwell business owner. Joining my channel allows you to support the videos I make and gives access to little perks like behind the scenes photos from between videos. There are details in the description. If you're interested in Chandwell's track plan, here's a very old video to give you the info on that. I hope this video has been useful. Let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching, stay safe and I'll see you next time.